what if you could tell Photoshop, hey Photoshop, put this man inside of an alley filled with graffiti and don't forget the shadows. <laughs> nice, but I want him wearing a black hoodie instead. Oh, perfect. Well, now you can with Photoshop's new generative fill. And today we're going to learn four mind blowing things you can do with this new tool. So, what are we waiting for? <laughs> Let's get started. So a little while ago, Adobe released its own online art generator called Adobe Firefly. It allows you to create artwork similar to Mid Journey or Leonardo, but one of the biggest differences is that it also had a lot of features specifically for graphic designers, like creating vector graphics, Photoshop brushes, and vector uh, graphic templates all just by typing in a text prompt. If you wanna try that out, you can visit firefly.adobe.com. You'll have to uh, apply to uh, join the beta, but a little patience, uh, uh, never hurt anybody. So um, anyway, today we're gonna to be talking about Adobe Firefly features that are now in Photoshop, specifically Photoshop beta. You do need the beta version of Photoshop to be able to use this feature. So um, let's hop into how to do that. So. What we want to do is open the uh, Adobe Creative Cloud desktop app and we want to go to the apps tab right here and then we're going to go right here to beta apps and you're going to look for Photoshop beta and click install next to it. Now I already have it installed right here so I'm just going to click open in order to get that open and um, that'll open uh, Photoshop beta. Make sure you close your regular version of Photoshop before you try opening Photoshop beta. Um, so you won't run into any issues. So uh, now that we're in here, we're going to hop into the first feature of uh, Adobe uh, Generative Fill, and that's to generate objects. So I have this picture of just this woods, this clearing in the woods, and I'm going to grab the uh, rectangular marquee tool, and I'm just going to draw uh, where I want the cabin to appear. So I want it to be about right here. Now, as you see, I have this little toolbar popping up. That's called a contextual uh, toolbar. If you're not seeing that, what you want to do is go up here to help, Photoshop help, and then you're going to just type in context, and you'll see a uh, context. I'm sorry, I spelled that wrong. Context, and you'll see the contextual uh, toolbar pop up right here. Context, the, the contextual taskbar. Just click on that, and it'll pop up there. Um, alternatively, if you don't want to use a contextual taskbar, once you have your selection, you can right click and go to generative fill. And um, if you also want another way to do it, you can also go up to edit and then go to generative fill. All right. So once in there, I'm going to type in cabin now and just click generate. And we're going to give it about uh, 20 or 25 seconds or so. It's relatively fast, honestly. Um, and it's gonna create uh, three variations of a cabin in the woods. And I'm gonna show you how this works just in a little bit. So here we go. Uh, okay, so here we have our cabin. And as you can see, it blended it with the background, with the colors, with the grass. Let me just hide this layer. So it, what it does is creates a new layer called a generative layer. And we're going to get into the properties of that in a little bit. But if I just hide this layer, this is the before and this is the after. Before and after. As you can see, it blends it with the uh, uh, objects in the scenery perfectly. Like it's perfect. And uh, what also happens, let me just go back to my selection tool. Um, if you go down here in the properties of your generative layer while it's selected, You'll see that it says variations. It has your prompt that you typed in, and then it has variations. And so if I click on one of these other variations, you can see some other options. It has that option, and then it has another option. It's loading a little bit slow right now. I'm clicking on these variations. Usually just kind of zoom through, but I don't know what's going on there. Well, we have that and that. And so if you want to if you like one of these variations, but you want it to be a little different, just click on that particular um, variation and then with the same prompt or you can modify your prompt, click generate and it'll create something um, a little similar to that variation. It'll create three other variations of that variation. All right. So that's how we uh, generate objects with uh, generative fill. Now we're going to go on to our next project and um, the next one is generating background. So I have this picture of this man looking kind of depressed sitting on a rock and um, uh, sometimes uh, you know uh, people do weird things when they're depressed and so I'm going to 
have a picture uh, of this man sitting on the top of a skyscraper, God forbid. And if you're having trouble, please dial 988 <laughs> um, Mental Awareness Hotline. Um, we don't want you doing anything crazy. But for this particular project, I'm going to go to Select and then Subject. Well, now I can't do that because uh, I have my generative layer selected that I had in here from earlier. So let's delete that. Now with the background layer select, I'm going to go Select Subject. And that's going to give me a selection of the man. And it's a little slow because I have like two OBS tabs open, a Chrome tab open, but usually my computer doesn't load like this. Anyway, I'm going to go to select inverse. And now with the selection tool selected, you have to be in a selection tool in order to right click. Um, so I'm going to right click and go to generative fill. And I'm going to type in a skyscraper rooftop and click generate. All right, and here we go. So as you can see, it did a pretty okay job. Sometimes um, you'll get some variations that are better than other, but let's cycle through these variations, see if there's one that's a bit, yeah, that one's pretty, mm, I guess it kind of works. Yeah, I think this one probably works the best for, for me, in my opinion. I mean, you may like a different one. You can always generate variations. So it'll generate a background around, um, your subject and that's how you generate backgrounds okay so let's go to our next project so extending images I have this picture of this couple and I'm gonna to go to the crop tool and I'm gonna change the ratio to 16 by 9 and what I want to do is to make sure it sets I stretch it out to the top and bottom of the original photo so that we keep all of the details and I'm just gonna click the check mark button at the top click OK now let's press control or command O to just fit that to screen and now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hold Control or Command on the Mac and click on my layer thumbnail. That'll select the, the full layers. You can see it put Q for a quick select. All right, so what I want to do is go to Select uh, Inverse. You know what? Actually, let's not do it that way. You want to always include some pixels from the original image. So let's zoom out a little bit. And let's start all the way out here. And let's select maybe up to there. And then do the same thing on this side right up to there and now I'm going to uh, right click generative fill and with no prompt just click generate uh, basically when you have no prompt Adobe is going to analyze the picture and fill it in with what um, makes sense to be there and so I just wait for that to generate <laughs> all right now as you can see this result is actually pretty solid except that her foot is all the way over here like she's uh you know mrs fantastic or something but let's try some of these other variations and okay so this one actually try adding a person now the the, the other times i did this i didn't get such weird results uh, okay yeah i think this one works uh the best to be honest as you can see the ceiling is a bit messed up and you got a few artifacts and some um, distorted objects and things but um, let me just show you a quick way to fix any um, glitches you get let's with our selection tool let me just select the roof area and let's say I want to fix that I'm going to just select that I'm going to right click generative fill and let's type in ceiling I meant ceiling not roof so let's type in ceiling and see if uh, we get something a bit better. You know what, actually, I think I'm gonna get a bad result. I shouldn't have typed in anything. I should have just let uh, Photoshop figure it out because now it may give me some random ceiling that doesn't match the scene. Yeah, yeah, so let's undo that and let's try that again without a prompt. All right, so that actually came out a lot better. Let's look at some of the variations. Okay. I like the first one the best. So I'm going to stick with that one. And there you have it. That's how you extend backgrounds in, uh, with generative fill. Now for our fourth option, and we have a bonus fifth, so don't go anywhere. So for the fourth one is going to be removing objects. So I want to click L for the lasso tool. And uh, you don't want to select... I'm going to remove this girl on the left here. I don't want to click select subject because I want to leave some space around her. You want to give generative fill some things to work with around the object you're removing. So let's do something like that. And then right click generative fill and without a prompt, just click generate. All right. And there you go. Your uh, subject is removed. 
Um, this could also work if you wanted to remove the moon or the tower, and you can also replace it with other objects. And that's that. Now, for our bonus project, I have this picture here of this man. I uh, The original picture is actually here. He was on this boardwalk, and he had on this uh, orange coat. And I wanted to put him in an alley and change the color of his hoodie. So what I'm going to do is just delete those layers and start with the original. The first thing we want to do is change the scene. So let's go to Select Subject, just like before and get a rough selection of the man all right let's check that all right that works let's um go to select inverse and then we're going to right click well we need a selection tool first right click generative uh fill and we're going to type in a uh, graffiti alley and click generate all right, now let's check out some of those variations. I personally like the second one. I like this one. So now that we have that, now we want to replace the man's hoodie. I actually have a selection saved of his, um, I mean of his coat. I want to replace his coat. I have a selection saved, so I'm going to go to selection, uh, select load selection where is it at here we go load selection and i'm going to go to coat because i don't want to waste your time trying to get a perfect selection i have it um his coat selected right there and i expanded the selection a little bit so what i'm going to do is go to uh right click generative fill and i'm going to type in a uh, black hoodie and click generate and there you go now as you can see it has these three variations so we have that one and we have this one hmm I kind of like that one with the little wrinkles and everything in it. So as you can see, that's how you use Photoshop's new generative fill tool. If you want to learn more about this tool um, with the Adobe explanation, you can click the link in the description. If you found this video to be helpful, be sure to leave a like, um, subscribe so that you don't miss a video, and comment below some cool things that you're doing with this new technology. So until next time, remember, take chances, make mistakes, and create something incredible. God bless you. See you next time.